tau overflows how initiation happens for initiation the disciple need to be ready and open just like a loving woman totally inviting and receptive indeed ready in a deep let go only then can the master enter and work deep within without the inner work transformation does not happen in initiation you have to lose all kinds of defense this armor of defense has to be thrown away you become vulnerable and then the master can enter you the process of awakening for example it is just like a deep love act you can reap a woman but you cannot reap a disciple you can reap a woman because it is a bodily act and the body can be reaped and entered without any consent without the will of the person you it can happen it is a forced thing the body is material and things can be forced onto it something just like this happens in initiation the master enters your spirit not your body unless you are ready and receiving the entrance is not possible a disciple cannot be reaped because it is not a bodily question it is a question of spirit and you cannot force entry into the spirit no violence is possible with it so when the disciple is ready and open just like a loving woman inviting and receptive ready in a deep let go only then can the master enter and work and centuries of work then can be done in moments mystery miracles happen you may not be able to do many you may not be able to do things in many lives which can be done or happens in a moment in a single moment something happens that you have been aspiring for lives and lives but then you have to be vulnerable and totally trusting you do not know what is going to happen and what the master will do inside you this will require ultimate trust a woman is afraid because the sexual act is a journey into the unknown for her unless she loves the man unless she is ready to suffer to carry the burden of a child to carry the child for 9 months and then make a life commitment to it unless she is deeply in love she will not allow the man to enter the body because it is not simply her body it is her whole life when she is in deep love then she is ready to suffer to sacrifice but this comes like an illusion in a moment it appears so but the other preparations have not been done so this begins to shatter and to sacrifice and suffer in deep love is blissful 
but this does not last for long. But the problem with the disciple is much, much deeper. It is not a question only of physical birth, of a new child. It is rebirth, which is far more difficult. He himself is going to be reborn. He will die in a certain sense and he will be born in a certain different sense. And this is possible only if the master enters the person. But the master cannot force the entry. No force is possible. The disciple can only invite and wait. And that is the problem. Indeed, a very great problem in a spiritual discipleship. Because the disciple goes on defending himself or herself, goes on creating more and more new armors around him, sometimes this, sometimes that, and this process continues. One moment it seems the, dis the seeker is open and welcoming. Next moment logic comes, becomes stronger and armor is created. He behaves with his master in the same way he would behave with anyone in the world. One moment, just like a lover, cooperative, loving, welcoming, just like hungry one moment, next moment, when the hunger is satiated, he moves away from the situation. He behaves with his master in the same way he would like to behave with anyone else in the world. And the same defense mechanism goes on working. Being with the master, being around an awakened one, being within his energy field is a totally different phenomenon. And then the same defense mechanism goes on working. That is why it needs tremendous courage to be around a master. You have to consciously leave all defense mechanism, all armors, and then the time comes. When you are using the different mechanisms and allow them to work, then time is wasted unnecessarily and not only time, energy is also wasted and the moment is delayed which can happen right now, this very moment. Time is wasted unnecessarily. But this is natural and sometimes even with great masters, disciples have missed the opportunity. Once the disciple is ready, things happen miraculously. Anand, one of the great disciples of Buddha and the dearest one, could not attain awakening while Buddha was alive. Buddha was with Anand for 40 years and still Anand could not attain. But many who came after Anand 
attained, became enlightened, and then it became a problem. And Anand was one of the nearest and closest one. He was moving with Buddha for 40 years continuously. He was like a shadow to Buddha. As much as he knew about Buddha, even Buddha might not have known, but he could not attain. He remained the same. And a very ordinary thing was the only barrier. He was Buddha's cousin, elder to him. This created the ego. And before he entered the commune, he asked Buddha three promises. And that became the barrier in the path of Anand to awaken. The first was that you will not ask me to go to spread your message. Second, I will stay in the same room where you will stay. Thirdly, you will not meet anyone without my presence. I can ask you these questions, these promises, as I am your elder brother. But once I become your disciple, I have to follow whatever you say. And this became the barrier. Buddha died. A great council met to write down whatsoever Buddha had said. It had to be written then. Soon those who lived with Buddha would also be no more. Everything had to be recorded, but the council would not allow Anand. And only he knew the greater experiences. Other monks went out to spread the message, but Anand was the one who heard every single word Buddha spoke. The statements of Buddha, his life, his biography, this was all known to Anand and no one knew so much. But the council decided that Anand could not be allowed because he was still not enlightened. He could not record Buddha's sayings because an ignorant man cannot be believed. He would not deceive, but with an ignorant man, nothing is reliable. He may think that something happened, but he may relate it authentically as far as he knows, but he is a man who is not yet awakened. Whatsoever he has seen and heard in sleep could not be believed. So those would, so only those who would record who had become awakened, they decided. Anand was crying as he had to stay just outside the council door. The door was closed and he remained just by the door for 24 hours crying and screaming but they could not allow him. For these 24 hours, he was crying alone, and then suddenly he became aware what had been the barrier, why he had not been able to attain while Buddha was alive. What had been the barrier that did not allow him to become enlightened introspect until I come back. Enough for now.